Hello everyone, my name is Jonathan Duckworth. I'm an associate professor in the Digital Media Program in the School of Design at RMIT Melbourne, uh, and also director of Creative Interventions Art and Rehabilitative Technology Research Lab, or SciArt for short. Uh, in my presentation today, Designing Inclusive Games for Non-Standard Bodies, I will discuss interdisciplinary research that brings together game design, with psychology, health sciences, and human-computer interaction to develop an evidence-based brain injury rehabilitation game called Edna. So one in six people globally will suffer from a disability arising from acquired brain injury, including stroke or head trauma. To put that in perspective, approximately 50,000 Australians suffer from a stroke every year. It often results in impaired hand and reach function, making it a leading cause of disability. The long-term effects of brain injury are difficult to predict and symptoms are different for each person. The general repercussion cycle shows what can typically happen to a person after a brain injury. The cycle starts with a trauma which leads to a variety of physical, cognitive, emotional, and behavioral deficits. And these problems interact and can combine to create psychosocial problems, which can lead to all sorts of new, new ones. Accordingly, brain injured patients experience difficulty to perform activities of daily living and self-care. Finding novel solutions that engage patients in rehabilitation is a major problem for therapists. Patients find it difficult to persist in therapy and to sustain their effort over time. They tend to find therapy tedious, repetitive, and many will eventually drop out. So as a result, many patients are left with lifelong disability and dependence on other services. So while recent findings in gaming in rehabilitation are promising, the interfaces often fall short of fostering some natural user interaction that translates into the relearning of body movement for patients. Existing off-the-shelf game, uh, off game systems are often too complex and game challenges and performance feedback are inappropriate. One of the key challenges identified in the, in the neuroscientific field is that developers of movement rehab computer systems are often constrained to use conventional desktop and game interfaces, along with expensive and complex robotic systems and motion tracking hardware. With the challenge of creating an intuitive to use game system for rehab, our team co-designed with patients and therapists a rehabilitation system called Edna. It's a portable touchscreen device that allows patients to undertake therapy in the clinic and the home. The technology combines a digital tablet touchscreen monitor, graspable objects, and intuitive game-like software tasks to enhance patients' motor function and cognitive skills. Patients use the handheld objects to play a variety of games, compose with sound, and create animated artwork. Actions that are simple in form and playful in effect, but they're better accommodating the physical and cognitive limitations of many of the patients. Our design process was led by six goals that envisaged the design of an upper limb rehab system and guided our game design prototypes. We wanted to create games for movement rehab that provided opportunity for creativity and play. We also wanted to offer a variety of games to broaden the appeal to different demographics. We also wanted to make it inclusive and be able to tailor the game difficulty to meet the varying physical and cognitive needs of the individuals. We also wanted to develop accessible user interfaces that reflect how we manipulate objects in the real world, as well as the ability to record and report empirical data of clients' progress in a meaningful way. And finally, ease of operation for both the therapist and the patient. We designed four simple graspable objects that offer the patient varying perceptual motor cues for action. 
These graspable interfaces assist patients relearn object manipulation and placement skills that are essential in daily actions like lifting a cup or placing a food container. We also developed a software that can track the ID and orientation of the objects when placed on the display. Edna consists of several styles of gameplay. The first is a series of goal-directed game-like tasks of varying complexity geared towards reaching, grasping, lifting, moving, and placing a set of tangible user interfaces on a set of queued targets. In these games, we track three aspects of our movement. Movement speed, accuracy of object placement, and movement efficiency between the targets. These variables are recorded for later analysis and can be fed back to patients graphically to help them to visualize their performance scores and motivate continued progress to facilitate learning. The second mode is a set of environments for composing sounds, drawing and manipulating visual feedback that promotes creative activity to increase the level of patient engagement in their therapy. There are no set goals in these environments, but rather patients can free play and experiment by practicing a range of movements, whereby minimal actions are rewarded by visual and audio feedback and, and the complexity of the effects produced. In the third mode, is a set of games each played for around five minutes that target both motor, motor and cognitive skills, including problem solving, mental rotation, divided, sustained attention, unimanual and bimanual motor skills, and dexterity. In this puzzle game, example, uh, patients use the objects to orientate colored laser beams through a series of matching colored gates. The goal is to move the objects to an appropriate location on the screen so that the laser beams intersect with all the matching colored gates. The player must simultaneously avoid any of the beams striking the polygonal shapes to complete the puzzle. As the player progresses, the level of challenges increases, such as smaller gates to encourage finer motor control and removing the color to increase cognitive load. In another example game, patients use finger touch to slice through a geometric shape to match the corresponding shapes surrounding the main object. The task becomes progressively more difficult by adding false starting and end points, removing starting points, rotating the objects, morphing objects, and introducing more complex shapes. Cognitive components of this game include visual spatial memory, sustained attention, and fine motor control and dexterity. Using an online portal, therapists can monitor the overall activity and task compliance on the Edna system for all patients in a clinic. Average time on task and session completion graphs are displayed at the top. Patients are listed below showing when they most recently used Edna. In the prescription, therapists can choose the intensity of the activity for each patient. Task settings can be adjusted at any time based on the patient's ability and their individual needs. Therapists can also monitor how an individual is doing by selecting the patient they want to see via the patient report. And therapists can also drill into specific session data to help monitor their task performance, see where their patients are improving and where they may need some guidance. Uh, the case study results really, I think it would be fair to say, exceeded our expectations. Um, I didn't expect to see the, you know, the magnitude of the effects that we got with that. So the patients were improving their performance on the system itself, which we would hope for, um, but very gratifying is that they're also improving their performance on other measures of motor skill and 
when we're assessing their performance in the home, um, they're also improving on functional measures of skill. And we picked that up not only with the case studies, but we then ran another study afterwards, a group comparison, where we followed, uh, I think it was 10 patients through the, the treatment regime and assessed their performance a couple of times before, after, and at follow-up. And we showed that their performance was improved similarly. So that was really, really quite remarkable, I think. Well, it's done a fantastic thing for me in part of my, as part of my rehab. It showed me the potential. It showed me what I could do. And I love playing games. Who am I kidding? And when from going from this, I went home and I found other games and other ways to improve myself as well. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> there are no words I can say without having a big goofy smile at the end of it. Seriously. So there were five key lessons we learned from developing Edna. The first was the, is the importance of evidence. So for most innovations in the digital health sector, particularly digital therapeutic games, it's important to gather clinical evidence to demonstrate efficacy and encourage adoption. However, conducting trials takes significant time and could be a major barrier to entry for many developers in this field without significant backing and collaboration. Secondly is co-designing with clients. We found it was crucial to include patients and therapists to help guide our designs. This related to matching therapeutic goals to functionality, simplicity of use and appropriateness of the games. And thirdly, appropriate feedback. So providing positive feedback and reducing or eliminating any negative feedback or sense of failure when playing a game is crucial for patients. Fourth is transfer of training. So it's important for patients to be able to transfer the skills they are learning rather than just be good at playing the game. So one of the innovations we introduced we called feed faded feedback. So unlike game design where feedback is presented to the player all the time, we're presenting options to fade out feedback so that the patients can perform independently and not become reliant on it. In this way, the patients can begin to transfer the skills they are learning. And lastly, is accessibility to meet the client's needs. To create simplicity and form and function that combines intuitive user interaction, and that requires little instruction. So to conclude, our research is suggesting that tailored, inclusive game design that targets the needs of patients and therapists offers many positive advantages over conventional therapy. But in order for games to truly penetrate the rehab market, further research is required to evaluate the pathway to adoption by rehab practitioners and the value it may create for the health sector. So thank you for listening and please feel free to reach out if you would like to know more or have any questions. Thank you.